positive changes are happening in the industry speared by black and brown climbers with the awareness that white has not allowed for this opportunity to happen before. Where are at least three good feet to get started? So one, two, three. And then look and go, oh, where are my hands? So pull back the lens a little bit before you just jump on the wall. Keep trying. Okay. Keep trying, boo. And then. Yeah. I don't want it. All right. I'm not. These ears are really hard. To do. Okay. Emily helps me with when I'm stuck. All right. One or two. And then I can keep climbing without, you know, getting stuck again. Yeah. Yeah. I want to take time to show and teach all of you as if you're hearing it like golden words for the first time. When I was a kid, I was raised by my dad and I had a brother and we used to go out and play in the woods all the time and that's all it was. We climb rocks and trees and I miss that time of my childhood and I miss seeing that evolve as part of a girl's experience. I have been a professional climbing coach for about 25 years now. Nice, Ava. There's a little pocket right there. You found it. I'm one of the few black female coaches out in the industry. What brown girls climbing is and what I do is very different than the mainstream. Uh, I focus most of my attention on building rock climbing spaces for black and brown kids. Every day I'm out there and I'm learning from these kids is just black joy. Like, squat, squat down. Don't be a noodler. And I put your foot right here. No, not that. That one. You're good. I'm kind of wet. It's just so amazing to watch them as part of a girl's experience. And it's not tomboy or your not being girl enough, it's you're just playing and you just love connecting with the earth. Yeah. Beautiful. Emily. Yeah, hey babe. How are you? Good. We just have to get down. Keep your foot on the gas, but your feet are going like this. I want you to be decisive with your feet. I want you to get this because it is a bold move and you'll feel it in your body, okay? Okay. Yeah, push on that, Zuri, push on that. Push on that to bring up a foot, just to bring up your left foot, just a little bit. Stand up, stand up, big move, big move. Yeah, stand up with those strong legs, stand up, girl. Yeah! Come on! Go, Zuri! You got it, Zuri! Go, Zuri! You got this, Zuri! You got it! You got it, Zuri! Last few steps, yeah! Nice! What do you say? Excellent! Have a seat! Woo! Have a seat! Okay. <sighs> You did it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, Grandma, to talk to you. Grandma needs to talk to me? That was so Okay, I'm coming. To watch hey, you everybody. Hey, you, you were so brave. It's 3 o'clock. Camp is over. I need to strike camp. And Coach Taylor, that was amazing, too. To watch you support her. That was just. Oh. <laughs> Emily, she was really nice and she's very like fun and she makes sure that our mental health as well as our physical health is good, I guess. And she helps us uh, to push ourselves. Again, lift up. So you see that lift right there? Coaching is an art form, and it's not necessarily uh, working for a specific gym to bring them profit, but you're working for your community. My job is to figure out what circuit over here I need to turn for that person to actually feel the illumination of what they already have. She really just taught me how to like represent myself a lot as a brown girl in, in other spaces and how to make other brown girls feel more seen and included too. I feel the challenges 
for black and brown communities in rock climbing are still very present today. The improvements that I've seen have been the improvements that black and brown people have taken upon themselves. It's still a thing. I'm up in um, Indian Rock. This woman walks by and says to the two black girls that are sitting down drawing the rock, you nigger girls need to get out of this park. And the older one heard it, the younger one didn't, and ran over to tell me what had happened. And I don't know where I was. I don't know where I went. Uh, I went into that protection zone. Here it is, this child in the Berkeley Hills, you know, all of this liberated Berkeley place of social justice. And it's one of the worst places for our bodies to ever be in is in this space. And I'm holding my own shit right now. And I'm just doing this the best way I know how. I'm trying to build this bridge and hold these girls in space and hold these girls in place. These are four little girls who are impacted on a summer camp by this one woman who comes by and calls them a nigger at 10 years old. It's so much pain. It's so racist in climbing. I forget about it because I love it so much. But when we talk about the white supremacy and the start of how climbing started, the colonization of land, the taking over of space, even to climbing a mountain and calling it yours and sticking a piton in it and calling it yours. I envision a climbing industry where the global majority has access, equality, fairness, creativity, autonomy, and sovereign joy. My vision is to have representation and have us learn what it means to take up space as well as other people learning from us what it means for us to be in their space.